Yeah, with ERP systems, it's uh, it's so easy to accidentally or intentionally create problems. A lot of times when people create ERP systems, enterprise resource planners back in the day, they would set the bills of material up incorrectly. And what would happen is then too much of this or too much of that, or, you know, you, you set up a bill of material for something that really only needs two bolts, but your bill of material calls for four. So it starts consuming uh, virtually two extra bolts. Now, in reality, people on the floor aren't using four bolts, they're just using two. But the system says there's a replenishment problem because you've hit your safety stock and your reorder points. And all of a sudden, all this inventory starts pouring in and people don't know what's going on. Uh, so e ERP systems, any ordering system has to be maintained daily. You have to check your results. You have to do a sanity check. I did this all the time. I'd print out and say, do we really have this much on the floor? And if it looked out of whack, I, we'd do a cycle count. We'd go out and just start counting that box or counting this section. We'd figure out, hey, there's there's something going on. Then we would track back into the production reporting system. You may have a production reporting system that's paper. Someone hands in a paper in the office. Someone sits down, types in the, uh, what was made. It gets into the uh, ERP system. An MRP run, material resource planner, material production scheduler, those two different processes run. And those aren't really intelligent processes. They're really just brute force calculators that calculate. In simplest terms, if you wanted to make 100 Betty Crocker cakes, it's going to tell you if you need to make 100 Betty Crocker cakes and the due date for all 100 or a portion of it is you know, May 1st, then you have to start ordering your material you know, in April. And you have to get your cakes made by the last week of April. And you have to get your shipments out and all this. That's what you have to do. Uh, so it can get really intricate. And you really have to know your supply chain, your, your material. You have to know how your business runs. In my experience, more most senior executives who kind of get moved in or pushed in or they just kind of pop out of nowhere and they just, they're over the company, they have very little understanding. They have a... They have a very generic understanding in business in general, and you really got to get down into the guts of the business, and most of them won't. Most of them won't. I don't know why. They've somewhere, they picked up along the way, uh, you know, I have to distance myself from the business and the people because I ultimately might have to lay everyone off. And right there, that's a problem, right? If you're an executive and you're, you're always thinking how you're going to lay people off, you're the wrong person for that business because you should be thinking, how am I going to grow this business? Yes, I may have to go in defense mode, but I shouldn't be always in defense mode if I don't know how to play, you know, offense, you know, and that's, that's the problem. It's just like NFL. There are some guys who think they can be an NFL coach. Really, they're a special teams coach or they're just an offensive coordinator or they're just, a, <laughs> they're just the, you know, the ball washer, you know what I'm saying? They're just, <laughs> <laughs> go over there and wash those balls, you know. But that's why you have to understand. And I, I bring all this up because when you look at the crypto world and you look how like Sequoia and BlackRock and Kevin O'Leary, Tom Brady, Shaquille O'Neal, all these people got ripped off by FTX because they didn't ask fundamental questions. Like I would have gone in there and said, hey, if, if I was coming into that company, to invest money or be part of that process, I'd say, okay, how do you generate wealth here? Because every business exists to generate wealth. And how every business generates wealth is it solves problems. This is my maxim. Every human business exists to solve problems and it exists and in solving that problem, it gets money. That's it. So what problem is FTX solving? That's a, that's a good question because the toxic Bitcoin maximalists like Michael Saylor and definitely Max Kaiser and those guys, they're going to say the problem's already been solved. Bitcoin solved it. We don't need you to solve with a centralized command and control structure of Bitcoin, which is a decentralized uh, system that can't be taken over by any one entity. It's a fair question. Why do people need to store their crypto on your centralized exchange, when in reality they should be sh storing it on their own cold uh, wallet, 
like the Bitcoin maximalists tell you to do? Fair question. What happens if people decide to start taking uh, ownership or conservatorship of their own crypto? What happens to your business model? See, no one ever asks those questions. You should ask those questions of any business. What happens? You may have a great product, but what if a competitor comes into the market? What if the government interferes? What if suddenly there's a new legislation that bans this product? Um, what if a, can a competitor come into this market? And in crypto, yeah, competitors can come in all the time. And they do. I mean, these, uh, you know what, coiners, they're manufacturing coins out of thin air all the time. And that's why people like Max Kaiser are always going crazy because they're like, just stick with Bitcoin. Now, I'm not a total toxic maximalist, I don't, although I think Bitcoin's there. I think, in general, the next generation of Bitcoin and crypto has to be, it has to be a form of what I would call machine altruism. Now, machine altruism means that we want these computers to be calculating, but not like Bitcoin doing the Byzantine generals problem. We want them to be working like SETI, Search for Entrust Extraterrestrial Intelligence. But in this case, we want it to solve childhood leukemia. We want it to solve breast cancer, um, you know, deforestation, Amazon rainforest problems, um, migration issues, functional uh, structural issues, all the problems that are plaguing humanity in the 21st century, we want to put computers to generate that. So then you say, hey, I really want to save uh, the rainforest in, that, in the Brazil. Okay, so I'm going to use this Brazilian cryptocurrency called the Amazon coin. And every transaction is giving money to, you know, conservation groups in the Brazil to preserve the Amazon. And meanwhile, the machines that are generating these coins get more value as they solve problems. So in the case of cancer, if uh, a team of doctors say, hey, this cancer coin, the children's leukemia coin, has given us a lot of information and we've now saved 100,000 lives, well, then that value of that coin goes up. Okay, so we're basing this on altruism. Now, what Sam Bankman freed what he said was he wanted to use the crypto for altruistic purposes, but you were depending on a human, <laughs> an individual human, and we're all frail, to not become, you know, enamored, entrapped, intoxicated by all that wealth. And honestly, you just can't trust the human with that much power and wealth. You just can't. I, I couldn't be trusted with it any more than you could. So you have to build it into the machine protocol, the programming language, so that we can't get our hands on it, or the developer can't get his hands on it, or the creator can't get his hands on it. It has to have a genesis point from which it goes out and no one can touch it. It works on its own. So in the altruistic coins I'm talking about, you would set up a, you could opt in with your laptop computer or computing center to to solve medical problems or cancer problems or environmental problems or social problems or mental health issues or whatever people wanted. And they would put, you would process that power and that would be the basis of your cryptocurrency that people would use. And let's say you don't want to be part of that generation process. You would say, hey, when I, when I buy something, I want to use the Brazilian Amazon coin or the children's leukemia coin. And every transaction has a micro a payment that goes to the charity that's underlying it all. And ultimately, we all benefit from that because, you know, fixing the Amazon benefits me and you, the, the Amazon people, Brazil. Childhood leukemia saves millions of lives. Um, cancer, we all are facing probably our mortality, probably with some type of cancer. So if cancer can be, we can focus computer and AI energy towards that to solve that problem, that can save hundreds of millions, if not billions of lives. And then using the commission, so you take the Bitcoin model, which in my opinion was based on the SETI model, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, and you have these altruistic miners that are decentralized, that are solving problems all over the world, and then they centralize, and then the answers are given, and people say, yes, this has helped us out, and the value of the coin goes up, because everyone says, hey, you know, that cancer coin helped save my mother's life, so I'm all in on it now. 
And that way it's not going to have this frenzy phenomena because it's based on real work, right? Real problems are being solved. That's why I keep going back to manufacturing production because you have to have something that you're converting raw material, whether it's information or it's nuts and bolts or it's steel or whatever it is, you're taking a raw material, you're adding value to it, and you're producing a product that people want. Same thing. You want to solve cancer. The raw material is out there. Data, blood tests, DNA tests, historical uh, medical records, medications. That needs to be synthesized so that pharmaceutical companies can draw from that. And they, in turn, would pay for that information, which adds more value to that cryptocurrency. This is how cryptocurrency can be repaired. But when you depend on a human like Sam Bankman Fried, who decides arbitrarily, well, I'm going to give my money to this political party or that political party or my, my buddies or I'm going to buy more humans. And that's when you give when you give a human that much power. We as a species just malfunction. OK, we just do. I would. You would. You have to step back and recognize that and say, how do I protect my creation, how do I protect humanity from me and my creation? Like maybe FTX it is, maybe it would have been a good thing. I don't know, but it turned into a bad thing because a human and a group of humans turned into <laughs> the natural state of greed and lust and desire for power, and, and and they just it just went to their head. Absolute power corrupts absolutely, and it blew up the system. So we have to design it so that. It cannot be centrally controlled like Bitcoin. It cannot be manipulated like Bitcoin. But unlike Bitcoin, what I'm talking about, its, its generation is problem solving for all humanity. That's real value. Any Remember, my, I said earlier, businesses exist to solve problems. And in turn, they get paid to solve problems. You have a flat tire. You go to a tire company. They put a new tire on. I have a problem. I, my car don't run. I need a tire fix. They put a new tire on it. I got to pay them because there's a lot of effort to get that tire here and have a mechanic and have a store and have computers and have a waiting room. All that has to be paid for. So it has to generate wealth. The problem with the current coins like you know, Solana and all this other stuff, yeah, they have a use case. I'm not saying they don't have a use case, but the problem is that intrinsically they're just created out of thin air and a bunch of people who do it make a lot of money. And I think people don't like that. They see through it like, wait a minute, I could just do the same as you guys. Oh, well, you don't have all the expertise. Well, after FTX, maybe you do. But if we altruistically design it and then people around the world can use that currency to solve these problems, that would be another way to fix crypto. Thanks for listening. See you in the next video.